In this segment, what I'm going to do is show you how I go about painting one of my water and landscape pieces. Now this time I'm starting with a photograph that I shot on location. Sometimes I work in plein air, um, and plein air means I'm sitting there in front of the river or the water source, but a lot of times I like to go back and work in my studio. So I have my picture, I've printed it, I want to make sure I can, you know, it's not the only copy I have of the photo. Then the next thing that is important to me is my color palette, especially with pastels. So what I'm going to do is now go with my picture over to all the colors I have, and I'm going to actually just hold the picture up up um, and try to pick some of my colors in this piece based on the picture. And I, I don't need to pick every color, but I want to have some idea when I begin. And when you're picking your colors, you want to think about complementary colors. You want to have some lights, some darks, some brighter colors. Um, you just want, want to have a variety of colors. So let's see. I also, the fun thing about pastels is picking the surprise color, which we'll do later on. Um, but this gives me a, a little bit of a range to work with my image that I have here. Okay, next thing I want to do, I have my palette picked out. I want to pick my background color. Now this is a scrap of paper that is the same color as the final. It's really good to have this or have a border around your pastel paper so I can come in and not only test the colors, but test my marks. It's very important. Um, one of my teachers along the way described it as the body has memory. So it's really good to practice what you're doing before you're working on the final and the final will be better. And you can see here, we have the light colors, there's some darks, some lights, and some brighter colors. Now, this is the image I was talking about, back to the easel. Um, I mentioned the body has memory. It's really important to practice, whether I'm doing from a photograph, or I'm doing on location, plein air, or I'm working from a live model. I always like to have a piece of junk paper, a newsprint works great, and Conti. Conti is a great bridge from pastel, or from line to form, um, from drawing into more like painting with pastel. So what I have here, the image, and then I have my newsprint. I've already sketched this in, and you can see it's basically proportionate uh, to the image. The photo is basically proportionate to the paper that I'm going to work on. And what I'm going to do is flip this. Underneath, you can see also I have what is called a glassine sheet. And glassine is an archival material that I like to use to protect my pastels. Because again, I don't fix them. And if I travel to workshops or on location, or if I'm taking it to the framer, I want to make sure that I have some protection and that it's covered with a nice piece of paper here. So then I'm going to flip this over. And we have the image that I have started blocking in. Now this is actually on uh, the, again, I enjoy using the Richeson Premium Pastel Surface. It's on a piece of paper. The color is called Storm. And I use archival artist tape. I just prefer to use archival for everything. It just works better. So I've taped my paper down so there's no buckling. You don't want to worry about your pastel going over the edge and your paper floating. So really important to secure that. And now what I'm going to do is continue working with the image. When I'm working, I will hold the picture up and a lot of times I step back to get an overall impression. When I'm working, I rarely sit down. It's very good for me to get the overall feel. It's also good instead of working like a little bit at a time with just by my hand, I'm actually using my shoulder, my whole arm, and I get this nice gesture. And it just works better for a looser pastel painting style. Now, you can see I've blocked in. I'm not worried at all about it being perfect. This is my impression of this picture. So as an artist, I don't worry about getting it exact. I do not draw with pencil first. I always start out with my soft pastels on the paper itself. Now, one trick you can do 
is you can pick a soft pastel if you're a little nervous about starting your first one or doing on good paper. You can pick a color of pastel that's very close to the color of your paper and you can do some sketching in. That way if you make a mistake it's not so, um, it's not so bold. You don't have to worry about fixing it quite as much. Now. The whole thing, when I'm painting, I want to block in all of the basic idea. And because I'm painting water, I want to actually address what is above the water and then what is the reflection of the water at the same time. So it's really important to come in. And if I'm adding the red there, then I do want to add a little bit as I'm going here as well. And that way I don't have to go back later and try to fill it in. It never looks like the reflection is as accurate if you don't work it at the same time. Even though the reflection will be a little lighter or a little darker depending on the time of day and all of that. Okay. The other thing, I want to use both the point of my pastel, so like so, and then also use the side. That's very important. Um, you want to get that variety of marks, not just don't always use the point and always use the side, do both. It gives you a better range. Okay, again, not worried about everything being perfect. I'm going to go ahead and start, because the water is moving like so, I'm going to go ahead and start my marks accordingly and even though there's a lot of yellow in these trees there's also some warm. The fun thing about pastel is you want to put those colors in underneath. Um, we also like I said are doing the color theory with red and green. So I'm going to do a little bit of that. And there's a little bit of this reflected color in here. Now you can see I'm taking this one red and kind of uh, going around different places. To me it unifies the piece if I use this red here and a little here and a little there as opposed to four different reds. Although in the end it's probably going to have a lot of different reds in it. It just helps to unify the piece in the beginning. Um, as you're working you want to think about this painting, this pastel painting, background, middle ground, foreground. So even though I've started everything, all the, the sky, the house, the trees, the water, I want to then develop, I want to make sure I finish the sky first, um, then the house, the trees, and then the very last thing will be what is closest to me. That way I'm not going back in and fitting my sky around this perfect building that I did, which won't be perfect, but um, it just it works a lot better and it makes it easier and less stressful. And in my picture here, the sky totally washed out, so I'm going to take a little bit of artistic license with that. And because I have the tree line here, I don't want to I don't want to come in and totally outline. I want the tree to kind of show through, the sky to show through the trees, excuse me. And I want some of that gradation in my sky, so I'm going to go ahead and make it brighter, a little lower. And a good thing also about stepping back is it gives you a better view of the whole thing. Um, so for example, in my piece, this structure, um, this red mill, is a little bit on the crooked side, and I like that. It's also crooked in the image, but if I was doing something where I really wanted it to be very straight um, and parallel with the edge of the paper, when I step back, I would notice that that's a little crooked. Okay, now because I did that, I'm going to come in down here again and use a little bit of this. And again, the water is moving, so I want to show, suggest the movement of the water with my mark. And I've already been warming up on here, so you won't see me doing a lot of warming up at this point because I am already warmed up. 